the station that's on your side. This is News 12, NBC 26 at 11. Some of the best athletes in the world will arrive at Augusta this week for the largest half Ironman in the world. It begins with a 1.2 mile swim into Savannah before competitors hop on two wheels for a 56 mile bike race. And it all ends with a 13.1 mile run through downtown Augusta. And the winner is Augusta with a $25 million impact. But before we get to all those details, we want to take a look at radar after another soaking for much of our area, um, most of the day, really. Let's check in right off the bat with First Alert Chief Meteorologist Riley Hill. How's Tuesday shaping up? Unfortunately, Tuesday is looking very similar to today, so make sure you have the umbrella before you head out the door. Even for the overnight, we have the continued chance for a few downpours that could cause a few isolated flooding issues. That would be mainly for flood-prone areas, so not for everybody. And currently speaking, just tracking a few isolated showers at the moment. That heaviest rain is closer towards the coastline, but that is expected to be moving in as we head into late tonight. So even though we're seeing a little break in the action at the moment, rain chances will continue into the overnight and for the first part of your Tuesday. So or your morning commute, commute if you're going to be up early, just watch out for a few showers. That will continue into the afternoon, likely going to see temperatures stay below normal again thanks to the cloud cover. We are expecting big changes, though, later into the week. We'll have that full forecast in just about 10 minutes. Riley, thanks. Ironman athletes will roll into town and prepare for a course and hope for dry weather. Businesses are already gearing up to cash in. Our Flynn O'Connor caught up with some local businesses, hoping this boost will help bail them out of a COVID slide. The Downtown Development Authority says 51 new businesses opened during the pandemic. Now as more events come back, they're finally getting the foot traffic they need. You know what they say, as one door closes, another opens. The mini masters. As the city takes down the rest of the mini arts and the heart festival, they prepare to set up for the Iron Man this weekend. The Art City Festival estimates they had 45 to 60,000 people come through their gates last weekend. A breath of fresh air for restaurants like the Bee's Knees, back open and rebranded since the pandemic. It was pretty good to get some new eyes on us and some people curious and inquisitive walking in and kind of checking it out and running, you know, in and out. This week, more than 3,000 athletes, their families, coaches, and fans are expected downtown. So this is your finish line area. This is your post-race area. This is where, where all the dreams come true not just for competitors, but local businesses too. According to the Augusta Sports Council, Ironman brings about $5 million in economic impact. I was just getting giddy the past couple of days because everything was finally coming together. The Downtown Development Authority says we're making up for the 1 million visitors we lost last year. Festivals and events are just great exposure for downtown businesses. It's free advertisement and people are going to look at all the new things that have opened up in the last year and say to themselves, let's go back downtown and see what's new. I mean, definitely good to see activity and you know, people not from the area coming. I think things are set to really grow and, and be really good for the community. Troy with Ironman says they will start setting up for the event Wednesday and to watch out for more bikers on the road as athletes start arriving. Sloan, thanks very much. Big week in Augusta and new at 11, the Aiken County School District Superintendent speaking out about the Lit Challenge on TikTok after some local students started copying that, taking school things like hand soap dispensers and destroying school property. The superintendent warning there could be legal consequences. What the social media challenge does not tell you is that these actions could result in infractions that are designated as larceny and severe vandalism each of which could result in the placement of students into our alternative education program, restitution payments, and charges with law enforcement. And it's not just Aiken County. Columbia County school leaders spoke out against the challenge last week. TikTok has since banned the challenge from its platform. You're taking a live look now with some construction happening on I-20 right at the state line. The